Hey class, today we're going to do a run through of the Newton's Law Lab that you have coming up this weekend. It's pretty straightforward, um, but there's just a couple of things I want to touch on. So let's get going and I'll try to make this one faster. The equipment you need comes straight from your lab kit. You need the pulley and clamp setup. You need your little scale, your bag of washers, your string, your tape measure, a single paper clip to attach the washers to the string and then this is this blue cart i pulled out of the kit when i got it this silver ring was inside of the cart so you can just take the ring and stopper out you don't need those for this lab but you will need them for the next lab so hang on to those for this they ask you to thread the string through the hole in the front of the blue cart I didn't want to hassle with that, so I just tied the string onto that little screw in the front of the blue cart, and that works just fine. Once you have your setup, I clamped the pulley um, to the edge of my counter. I have the string tied to my cart, and then I'm looking down here to make sure my string doesn't hit the floor, and that's how I know where to cut the string and tie the paper clip on to the end of it. So. Um, make sure you set it up with your stoppers in place and see how long the string is and then that way your washers will not hit the floor before your cart hits the, the books or whatever you're using to stop it. So that's pretty important. But that's the basic setup. Once you go there, the other thing that's confusing sometimes is managing the mass of the system. So I've got my little scale turned on. I've got all of my washers and my string and my accelerating mass piled into the cart. That total mass is not going to change throughout the whole, uh, all the trial runs of the experiment. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my accelerating mass here and I'm just going to add masses from washers from inside the cart onto the accelerating mass so that my system mass will stay the same. I can read across here. It is 2938. Those are grams. It's 293.8. I'm going to divide that by a thousand to get it to kilograms and then I'm going to, going to record it. When I'm doing the mass of just the accelerating mass, then I am going to take the part that's dangling and just put that on my scale, 23.3 grams, divide it to get it into kilograms and record it in my data table. So that part's pretty straightforward too. And then when it comes time to transfer, it's super easy. I have this lovely little video for you. You just take one out of the cart, put it on your hook, and then do your new mass. So couldn't be easier, but the, the point is that you don't want to take new washers that haven't been already uh, weighed and add them to your system because your math of your system needs to stay constant throughout this process or your data will be funky at the end. Let's look at a trial run. So I have it all set up here on my counter. You see I've got my start marked. I've got my stop point marked. I did this in slow motion. Yours will go faster. Um, I let it go. I start my timer. It goes across. You can see my accelerating mass coming down over here. And I'm going to stop my timer right about now, right when the front of the cart hits my measured area. Whatever that time is, I'm going to record on the data table. You're doing, I think, three times at each mass so that you can average those and have more accurate results. And then once you have your three trials at each mass, you'll add another washer from the cart to the hook, and then you'll do it all over again. So that is what the trial run looks like. Then you're going to use your lab data. So if you're looking at the columns in your data table, I don't have a data table in front of me, but you can grab yours and look at it, and that'll be just as good. So the mass of the accelerating washers, you measure on the scale, that comes out in grams, you convert that to kilograms. And then the accelerating force due to the washers is that mass, what we got here was 0 0.0233 kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, that unit comes out in newtons because kilogram meters per second squared are newtons. That is the accelerating force, and I have that highlighted because that's a, a number you're gonna use on your data table later. 
Once you have the force, you can set it aside. Now you start working on the time of travel. I just took the three times. I just made these up. I didn't really do this. So your numbers are going to be different, but you're going to take your th time for each of the three trials, add those together, divide by three, and then that comes up with your average. The next column is the average time squared. Average time times average time equals average time squared. Pretty straightforward. Your distance traveled, you're gonna measure it. Mine was 0.23 meters. Well, it was 23 centimeters. Converting that to meters, I got 0.23 meters. So make sure you do the conversion and that's just gonna be whatever your distance is. You're going to measure it. Your number will be different than mine and that is fine. The next column wants you to do twice the distance traveled. So that's pretty easy. So 0.23 becomes 0.46. That should be the same for each of your trials. That distance shouldn't change. You're gonna time across that same distance every single time. So once you figure out the first time, you know what it is for all of them. And then the acceleration, 2d over t squared. Well, we've got 2d, which is 0.46. We've got t squared. So we're just going to divide those two numbers and then we have 0.35 meters per second. Again, your numbers will be different, so don't expect yours to match mine, but I highlighted that because acceleration is the other important number we want. When it comes time to graph, we're gonna do force and acceleration as coordinate points on a coordinate grid, and that's going to give us a linear function that will give us the mass because the slope is gonna equal the mass. And that I walked through, um, I think, in the other announcement about this lab. So I'm not going to spend time on it now. It's also in the background information. If you don't see how the mass of your system is connected to the slope of your line, send me an email and we can talk about that more in detail. All right. So I walked through making graphs using Excel last week. I'm doing it again this week. I've already got this recording. I'm just gonna play it in a minute. If you have that part and you're done, you, you don't need to watch this video, but if you're still having trouble using Google Sheets to make a graph, then this one will be helpful for you. Um, one thing I'm just gonna say about the lab, you are asked to find the percent difference between the mass and the slope of the line, make sure you do that. There's not a place to find the percent difference. It's not on your template, but I expect to see that somewhere in your lab. So make sure you address that. Okay, now let's go on and just listen to this video. If I can get it started, there. The thing we're gonna do is make the graph. So I'm gonna go, I'm at Google Drive. I'm gonna do new Google Sheets. There it is. I've already saved my data, so I'm just gonna copy it in here. Copy, paste. So there's my data. Acceleration is in the first column because it's going on the x-axis. Force is in the second column because it's going on the y-axis. And you'll see I've included units in there too because these column headers are going to become my axis labels when I'm all done. So all I have to do is make sure my data is highlighted. Go to insert go to insert, go down to chart, and there it is. This one is a scatter chart. Um, I'm gonna make it a line chart, and then I'm going to customize it. I'm gonna scroll down to series because everything I want is there. And I am going to add point sizes because I like to see my data points. I'm going to scroll down a little bit further. I'm gonna add a trend line. And then I'm going to look a little bit further down here and under label, I'm going to say use equation. So now I have my best fit line right here. The equation of the line is right here. The slope of the line is right here. And that's important because it's the slope of this line that we're comparing to the mass of the entire system. Remember that force equals mass times acceleration. So that's why the slope is equal to the mass in this case because we've left the mass constant. So that's all that. And if I wanna put this in my lab report, I go over here to copy chart and then I can click on my lab report and I can just paste it right in there. And then it's all done with a good title and good um, axis labels that include units and then the slope is right there, and that's the number I compare up here 
to the mass of the system and the slope of the line I would put right in there. So that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so that's that graphing. Um, we walked through how to do the lab. If you have any questions about how to analyze the data, just give me a shout. And I hope that this one is a little shorter than the last video I made. I think it will be, but if I went too fast, I apologize. Send me an email. I'll go over anything you have questions about. All right, have fun with this lab. Thanks. Bye.